Wind tears across the coastline with enough force to bend steel roofs. Rain falls horizontally, driven like needles by a rotating wall of air. And beneath the noise, something far more unsettling emerges on the instruments. The storm's internal pressure is still dropping. Super Typhoon Uwan is strengthening at the exact moment it should be weakening. And that single shift changes everything. This is Super Typhoon Uwan, a storm arriving with an unusual combination of size, speed, and timing. Evacuations are underway, but not fast enough. River systems are already swollen, and emergency sirens, some for storm surge, some mislabeled as tsunami alerts, are echoing across coastal towns. The question is clear. Why is Uwan intensifying this close to land? And what chain reaction does that trigger next? The Philippines sits at the boundary of the world's most powerful typhoon corridor. Warm Pacific waters supply energy, atmospheric rotation amplifies it. But this year, those waters are significantly hotter, partly from El Nino, partly from long-term heat accumulation. Hotter water means faster storms. And Uwan didn't just strengthen, it reorganized with near-perfect symmetry. Satellite scans revealed a tightening eyewall, dense convection, and spiral rain bands expanding outward. Meteorologists call this structural maturity, the phase when a storm becomes resistant to weakening. But here's the detail that changed the trajectory of every forecast. Uwan's wind field is enormous. Gale force winds stretch nearly 1,800 kilometers across, large enough to disrupt the Philippines long before the center makes landfall. And then came the second complication. Just days ago, another typhoon swept across the country. Soils across Luzon and nearby regions are still soaked. River basins are full. Drainage systems never reset. This combination, an oversaturated country and a rapidly intensifying superstorm, is exactly the scenario hydrologists hope to avoid. And this is where scientists started sounding internal alerts. As Uwan enters the Philippine area of responsibility, three major systems begin collapsing simultaneously. 1. Power and communication networks fail early. Initial bands from the storm snap trees and transmission lines across eastern regions. Grid operators report cascading failures. When one area goes down, the surge shifts to its neighbors, tripping them offline as well. This creates rolling blackouts that spread faster than repair teams can mobilize. Weather radars detect intense lightning in the eyewall, a sign of powerful updrafts and sustained storm organization. And here's the first red flag forecasters didn't like. Lightning density increases when a storm pulls in massive heat energy, meaning Uwan still has fuel. 2. Rivers and dams enter crisis mode. River gauges across Luzon show levels not seen since last year's worst floods. Several major stations, including those along the Cagayan and Pampanga systems, are already above critical thresholds. This leads to a dangerous hydrological scenario. Dams must release water to avoid overtopping, but every release accelerates downstream flooding. Hydrologists describe this as hydraulic compounding, where one risk amplifies another. And this next detail is the most alarming. Mountain slopes remain saturated from the previous storm. Once soil reaches maximum moisture capacity, even light rain can trigger landslides. Heavy rain produces fast-moving debris flows with almost no warning. Three. Storm surge rising, faster than models predicted. Uwan's huge wind field pushes water toward the coastline long before the center arrives. Storm surge estimates now show two to four meters of rise in several eastern bays. The timing is especially dangerous. High tide will align with peak winds in some areas, stacking surge on top of tidal elevation. This forces emergency teams to make a difficult decision protect inland flood zones, protect coastal areas from surge, or split resources between both and risk under coverage everywhere. And this next detail shifted the risk map again. Some evacuation centers, damaged in the last storm, are now inside outer surge polygons. That means thousands may need to be moved twice in worsening conditions. 4. Siren spread. Confusion. Coastal sirens begin to sound across multiple provinces. Some are storm surge warnings. Some are mislabeled systems dating back years. Some trigger automatically when sea level sensors detect rapid changes. This creates a new problem. Many residents mistake surge alarms for tsunami alerts. This confusion spreads faster than official updates can correct it. Models now outline several credible scenarios for the next 12 hours. 
Scenario 1. Rapid Inland Flooding If Uwan stalls, a common behavior for large typhoons, rainfall totals may exceed 400 millimeters in localized regions. On saturated ground, nearly all of that turns into surface runoff. This produces rapid rises in rivers and flash flooding across low-lying districts. And here's the hidden detail most people overlook. When drainage systems are overwhelmed, water doesn't simply rise, it accelerates. Fast-moving flood water can sweep through neighborhoods before evacuation teams can respond. Scenario 2, Deep Storm Surge Penetration Several Philippine bays create natural funnels that amplify incoming water. Under a large storm, surge can travel 1 to 2 kilometers inland, especially where rivers open into the ocean. This is not a single wave like a tsunami. It is a continuous, forceful rise in sea level driven by wind and pressure. Homes near the coastline may flood from both directions. Coastal surge from the east river overflow from inland. This two-front flooding is one of the most dangerous hydrological outcomes. Scenario 3. Infrastructure Cascade Failure Highways, bridges, and seawalls damaged by the previous typhoon form weak points. Under prolonged rainfall and surge, they may collapse under structural stress. Once a major highway goes offline, relief operations slow dramatically. Bridges with weakened foundations may fail when water velocity intensifies around their supports. And this is where disaster managers raised concern. Some seawalls repaired only with sandbags may not withstand a direct storm surge. If even one section collapses, the resulting breach can flood entire districts. Scenario 4, Multi-Hazard Convergence This is the scenario that emergency planners fear most. If rainfall peaks at the same moment surge arrives, and if soil saturation triggers landslides, the country faces flooding from above, below, and behind terrain simultaneously. This convergence is rare, but scientifically plausible with Uwan's strength and timing. Meteorologists, hydrologists, and seismologists agree on several critical points. 1. Super Typhoon Uwan cannot generate a tsunami. A tsunami requires a major offshore earthquake or a large undersea landslide. Uwan provides neither. P-H-I-V-O-L-C-S-P-A-G-A-S-A, -S -S the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, and the Joint Typhoon Warning Center all confirm no seismic activity associated with the storm. The alarms heard along the coast are storm surge alerts or misfires, not tsunami warnings. 2. Siren confusion comes from outdated systems. Many coastal barangays use a single alarm for multiple hazards. During strong storms, this leads to false tsunami interpretations. And here's the part most residents never hear. Some sirens activate automatically when sea level sensors detect sharp fluctuations. Fluctuations caused by wind-driven water, not seismic displacement. 3. The actual marine threat is storm surge. Surge behaves differently from tsunamis, but is equally deadly in shallow coastal regions. It rises gradually, then suddenly, and often exceeds predicted heights when combined with high tide. Scientists warn that surge remains the dominant threat for communities closest to Uwan's projected path. 4. The next forecast window is critical. Uwan's interaction with warm offshore water may allow it to maintain strength longer than expected. This means peak winds, rainfall, and surge may coincide. If that happens, several scenarios escalate simultaneously. Super Typhoon Uwan is not just a high wind system. It is a compound hazard striking a region already overwhelmed by previous storms. River basins are full, soils are unstable, reservoirs are near capacity, and storm surge is approaching faster than expected. The danger doesn't come from one factor, but from all of them colliding at once. In conditions like these, accurate information becomes the strongest tool for survival. Rumors distort risk. Misinterpreted alarms create panic. But official data from Pagasa, Fivalx, the NDRRMC, and Global Monitoring Centers provides the clearest picture of what's happening and what comes next. Follow verified advisories. Move early. Avoid low-lying areas. And treat every warning as time gained, not time lost. Super Typhoon Uwan is reshaping the landscape hour by hour. Understanding the science behind it helps us respond before conditions shift again.
If you've experienced storms like this, share your perspective in the comments. Your insight adds to the collective understanding of risk across the region.